Fulton County Jail in Georgia, where former President Trump turned himself in last week on charges of election tampering, was called by the Atlanta Magazine infamous and deadly. So far this year, seven incarcerated people have died in that jail. Most recently, 66-year-old Alexander Hawkins was found dead in his cell after being arrested in July on a shoplifting charge over a pair of pants and an electric shaver. Around 3,600 people are incarcerated at Fulton County Jail in Georgia. Just under 0.2% of the population of that jail has died this year. Just under. In response, the United States Department of Justice announced last month they are conducting an investigation into conditions at that prison. But I'm not really here to talk about Fulton County Jail in Georgia. I'm here to talk about the ACI, the Adult Correctional Institutions, right behind me in Cranston, Rhode Island. So far this year, six incarcerated people have died in that prison. Most recently, a family member contacted DARE, Direct Action for Rights and Equality, and reported that the Rhode Island Department of Corrections has claimed an incarcerated person committed suicide by shoelace. Family members are not convinced. The man was incarcerated on August 14th and died three days later. Family members said he was going through withdrawal and had bad asthma. They believe he may have not have received the medical care to address what was happening to him. The 2020 census put the incarcerated population at the ACI at 2,671 people, just over, over 0.2% of the population of that, this prison has died this year. In response, the United States Department of Justice has done nothing. Rhode Island Governor Daniel McKee has done nothing. Attorney General Peter Narona has done nothing. Our leaders at the General Assembly have done nothing. According to DARE, an incarcerated person had a heart attack in July and was left in his cell for over three hours during the heart attack while correctional officers watched and even took pictures. All the deaths at the ACI this year occurred under the leadership of Director Wayne Salisbury, who was appointed in January by Governor Daniel McKee. They include Brian Rodinas, who died by suicide after being subjected to solitary confinement, and Carol Pona, an elderly woman who died of stomach cancer after being held for three months awaiting a 32F probation violation hearing. Rhode Island Department of Corrections has refused to disclose the names of the other three individuals at least two of whom died by suicide. Wayne Salisbury was the director of the Wyatt Detention Center in 2008 when Hui Li Jason Eng died after months of medical negligence. Eng was detained by ICE in 2007 and began, and began reporting excruciating back pain in 2008. Correctional officers accused him of lying and faking his pain. Even, through, even though by mid-July he was unable to walk or stand or use a payphone to call his family. Why officers denied him a wheelchair and ignored his pleas for proper medical attention. On July 30th, Eng was dragged out of his bed and carried in shackles into a car, bruising his arms and legs. The guards drove from him for two hours to a federal lockup in Hartford, Connecticut, where ICE officials pressured him to withdraw all pending appeals of his immigration case and accept deportation. When Eng finally was allowed to see a doctor, he was diagnosed with liver cancer and a broken spine. He died five days later. This was under the leadership of the man who now leads this prison, where six people have died this year. In 2022, correctional officer Jeffrey Peters was charged with manslaughter after Timothy McQuested committed suicide in the intake services center. Peters was accused of criminal negligence in executing his core duties, his care duties toward McQuested, who was severely mentally ill. During the last legislative session, the head of the prison guards union was accused of threatening a member of the public over his testimony calling for changes to the state's solitary confinement law. He literally told the man, I know where you live. The year before that, this same union president released confidential information and violated the privacy rights of formerly incarcerated people because they testified before the General Assembly in a way he didn't like. This is the way this prison guard 
treats people who are out here in the world. Imagine what he's doing in that prison right now behind me. We don't have to go to Georgia to find a cruel prison where death, dehumanizing conditions, and torture are the norm. We could just go to Cranston. There it is.